75 years ago today, Mahatma Gandhi, who led the campaign for India's independence, was assassinated in Delhi. The former lawyer is often called the father of the nation and credited with leading a non-violent struggle for independence from British rule. Gandhi wanted an independent, peaceful India that protected religious freedom. But that was challenged by growing Muslim and Hindu nationalism. In 1947, India gained independence from the British, but at the cost of partition. Muslim-majority Pakistan and Hindu-majority but secular India came into being. Religious riots followed and Gandhi went on hunger strike to oppose the violence. On January the 30th, 1948, he was assassinated by a Hindu nationalist who believed Gandhi had been too accommodating to Muslims during the partition. Around a million people turned out for his funeral. That was in 1948. But the India of 2023 is rather different. Hindu nationalism has been emboldened by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, leaving Gandhi's legacy in tatters, as DW correspondent Manira Chaudhary finds out. Rakesh Kumar Bairwa, a school teacher, has brought his students on an excursion to Rajkhat, a memorial in Delhi dedicated to Mahatma Gandhi. Rakesh himself has read about Gandhi since he was a child. He wants his students to learn more about the great man as well. Gandhi was a leader of our country who made a name for himself and for our country globally. He led such important movements and struggles that we still think about. The kids should also know all this. Mahatma Gandhi stood for non-violence and campaigned fiercely for religious tolerance eradication of untouchability and self-rule for India. Apurvanand Jha, a professor at Delhi University, often writes about Gandhi. He describes him as a dissenter and a disruptor. He says that society's collective understanding of Gandhi has become superficial. Our schools, our textbooks, uh, our universities don't want uh, children or students to to come across that Gandhi who asks uncomfortable questions and who, who questions uh, the status quo in every sense of the term. Jha says today's society has lost sight of Gandhi's true relevance. Vandana Jha agrees. She has been a librarian for 20 years now. Over the past few years, she says she has seen a change. Earlier, more people would come to the library on occasions such as the anniversary of Gandhi's birth or death. Children also used to come and read about Gandhi, but not many come now. Even the interest in Gandhi, I feel, is not as great as before. Vandana's impressions seem to be borne out by the people we spoke to on the streets. Personally, the biggest fan of Mahatma Gandhi, and I think he has been a big, biggest influencer. But the younger generation, they are not valuing those values as such. I think the present milieu he is being made irrelevant. The values for which that he fought for, uh, the current ethos that's prevailing is absolutely diametrically opposed to that. 75 years after his death, Mahatma Gandhi's name is still well known. But his ideals and teachings appear to have lost much of their power in the country of his birth. That loss has been his assassin's gain. Nathuram Godse, who shot Gandhi three times in the chest, is now openly fated by some. DW's Adil Bhatt reports. This memorial in the heart of Delhi is where Mahatma Gandhi was assassinated by a radical Hindu nationalist, Nathuram Godse. 75 years ago, as Gandhi walked across this ground, Godse shot him three times in the chest, killing him on the spot. Today, Harsh Mandar, an activist who opposes Godse's Hindu extremist ideology, is on his regular visit to pay tribute to the Mahatma. He says that Gandhi's assassination by Godse shook the very core of the nation. There was a tempest uh, of hate that was sweeping uh, much of our country. And that suddenly, uh, you know, with his assassination, with the blood that spilled right here, uh, I think we were stunned as a nation into recognizing 
where the politics of hate was leading us. For Mandar, this memorial is a reminder of Gandhi's sacrifice in the darkest and most turbulent period of India's political history. But in recent years, a cult of personality has begun around Nathuram Godse. Godse belonged to a right-wing organization called the Hindu Mahasabha. He advocated the idea of a Hindu nation and believed that Gandhi had betrayed the Hindus by being sympathetic towards the Muslims during the partition of the country in 1947. For the biographer of Godse, Derendra K. Ja, the growing admiration for the assassin is a serious cause of concern. He says that Gandhi's statues are being increasingly vandalized by those who oppose the idea of a secular India. So assassination was a kind of attempt to uh, stall this process of India becoming a secular democracy. The main hurdle was sought to be removed through assassination. So it was an attempt to resolve this clash, the clash between two ideas, to capture the soul of India. That clash between a secular India and a Hindu nation state has become more prominent today. This temple in the northern city of Meerut is devoted to the cult of Godse. The group of men here is rehearsing celebrations to mark Gandhi's assassination on January 30th. Ashok Sharma is the current leader of the right-wing Hindu Mahasabha group, of which Godse was a member. He dreams of opening Godse temples across India. It is not only the dream of Hindu Mahasabha, but the dream of every Hindu fundamentalist and Hindu nationalist to erase the name and ideology of Mahatma Gandhi and make Nathuram Godse the father of the nation. These views are profoundly shocking for those who view Gandhi as the father of the nation. And joining me now for more is Sucheta Mahajan. She is a historian and professor at the prestigious Jawaharlal Nehru University in Delhi. Professor Mahajan, how mainstream would you say is support for Mahatma Gandhi's assassin, Nathuram Godse, in India today? Well, I'd say that it's not mainstream at all. These are fringe elements. Uh, they are used by the Bharti Janta Party uh, to suit their political interests because uh, there's always a need for extremist elements and fringe elements to satisfy a certain constituency. So um, they're allowed to do stuff like setting up temples to go say, uh, you can even have a BJP MP Pragya Thakur uh, praising uh, Godse and uh, other BJP functionaries, uh, you know, coming up with uh, posters where uh, they're pointing uh, air guns which are squirting uh, blood. Uh, you know, blood is coming out of the of Mahatma's right. body. They are killing him. Uh, but I would say that it's not mainstream at all, and that's the saving grace for us in India today. However, there's one caveat, which is that Godse represented in 1947 what broadly the BJP and particularly the RSS and its allies represent today, right. a particular ideological politics. I do want to That's talk to you about the, the BJP. I, I do want to talk to you about the BJP because you had one of Mahatma Gandhi's uh, great grandsons, Tushar Gandhi, saying that Prime Minister Modi, through his uh, speeches, is quote lighting the fire of hate, and that this will one day consume India itself. Would you agree with Tushar Gandhi's assessment? I would not go as far as that. I think as the prime minister of a big country, um, he cannot afford to push the politics of hate beyond a certain point. 
But is it only about uh, electoral politics or does the BGP also actually believe in what it's saying in, in one sense? Because we are talking about the BJP, which traces its roots back to the RSS, of which Nathuram Godse was at least at one point a member. I would say that uh, Godse and his mentor and patron Savarkar who was clearly behind the conspiracy, was a very important member of the Hindu Mahasabha. And Sardar Patel, not Nehru, Sardar Patel as Home Minister was the one who wrote saying that it was a wing of the Hindu Mahasabha under Savarkar, which was behind the conspiracy to right. kill Mahatma Gandhi. So there's no doubt that the politics of Godse, of Savarkar, of RSS, and even the BJP are the same ideological politics, which right. is one of a majoritarian politics, the desire to uh, establish a Hindu state, a Hindu Rashtra, the demand for which came right as early as 1947, and because right. they saw Gandhi as an obstacle, he had to be put out of the way. There is no difference ideologically between all four strands. I was right. only For making the distinction that electorally and from a tactical point of view, you need your allies, you know, in other states. You need right. the, uh, you know, uh, Nitesh. You need uh, people in from Orissa, you know, you need those guys who are not going to uh, espouse the politics of hatred in so direct a way. We'll uh, leave that there for the time being. Thank you so much for joining us today, Sucheta Mahajan from JNU University.